Our next speaker is the past chair of the Board of Directors for the Southern Rhode Island Chamber of Commerce and has led an eclectic business path over the years, including producing music, marketing, and charity fundraising, just to name a few. He is currently presenting a proposal to address the root cause of hunger, by, of hunger and poverty by improving our local economy. Speaking tonight about the Rhode Island First Initiative, please welcome Steve Maciel to the stage. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. As the founder of the nonprofit End Hunger Foundation, we've held countless community benefits and food drives. Yet by many markers, we're losing ground. Raising taxes and fees while cutting social services seems to be the new norm. I'd like to propose an alternative. How about generating more revenue? How about addressing the root cause of hunger and poverty by helping local business prosper, which improves our economy and subsequently gets folks back to work. What I'd like to propose to you, our state government, and our business community, is an initiative to serve as a rally point to help float our economic boat while we navigate a better course. The initiative is called Rhode Island First. This is a simple plan to refocus our attention inward to support Rhode Island businesses first. The Rhode Island First Initiative is a three-part plan of action. The first action is to lobby our state government to, when possible, give purchase consideration to Rhode Island businesses first. A minimum 10% goal has been discussed with the state. And I recently learned that there's a term for this called strategic purchasing. <coughs> the second action is to then share this message with our businesses and our consumers and ask them to also shift their purchasing power at least 10% toward local businesses. If we all made a point just one out of 10 times to buy that next book at a local boutique or shop at the Connor Bistro, what a difference it can make. Results from a comparable study show that just a 10% shift in consumer behavior to shop and dine locally would create $140 million in new economic activity, add 1,600 new jobs, provide $50 million in new wages. If state and business purchases were factored in, we'd easily triple those numbers. We would bend over backwards to attract the business to produce these numbers, and yet we can do it instantly by simply shifting existing budgets. I propose we adopt a 10% shift in all of our purchasing. And let me state for the record, Rhode Island First is not anti-big box. It is decidedly pro-small box. The third action in keeping with the Rhode Island First theme is to emphasize the things we offer us at in Rhode Island rather than the things we'll last at. One industry where we excel is tourism and its sectors of hospitality, retail, arts, and entertainment. This industry has the ability to A, create greater demand for native products and services, B, generate revenue very quickly, C, effectively promote Rhode Island's brand, and D, most importantly to me, readily hire folks up from the grip of hunger and poverty. And we're very fortunate to have a number of firsts to capitalize, and for the purpose of this proposal, our claim to fame as America's first resort tops the list. Legend has it that in 1524, the explorer Verrazano sailed his armada into Narragansett Bay and wrote in his captain's log, I was so struck by the beauty, I decided to linger a fortnight. This was the first two-week vacation in recorded American history. <laughs> <laughs> Together, these actions serve to enhance and connect our existing buy local, made in Rhode Island, and discover Rhode Island movements. I'm suggesting to our business community that we rally our collective resources to greatly enhance existing tourism council accommodation packaging. Let's set an immediate goal to return to tourism income levels of 2007. The Rhode Island Foundation estimates that if we had maintained these levels, we would now be benefiting from 375 million in revenue, 6,800 jobs, and a tax boon of 87 million. We've already achieved these numbers once. We can achieve them again with the right plan of action. We can attract more overnight leisure travelers 
by what I call irresistible vacation packaging, and then drive these tourists out onto Main Street with compelling consumer office. So to sum up what I mean by generating more revenue, helping local business prosper, and improving our economy, I propose we all adopt a 10% shift in our purchasing. Set a goal to return to 2007 tourism income levels and drive more traffic to Main Street. We have test marketers some specific methods to help accomplish these goals. So if you're interested, simply Google, Google my name, I should pop right up. I'd be happy to share the details with you. Thank you for your attention, and thanks in advance for your consideration. <laughs>